Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Yes, Vancouver Carpenter. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to install a window sill. So originally it was gonna be its whole own video how to trim out a window, but I think just doing the sill alone is its own video. And then we'll do how to case out a window after. So um, yeah, the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out um, how it's gonna be around the jam. So let's take a look here. So what we really wanna get is we wanna get the corners of the window, like see this weld, all pointing right into the corner there. So it looks real nice and purdy. Um, and so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out our line, like where all of these are gonna land on the window. So the first thing we need to figure out in terms of determining where that's all gonna be is we need to find the smallest point to the window. So if I go right here, I can fit my hand in behind here. So there's gonna need to be a lot of filler here, right? And it's all different. It varies the whole way. But right here, this window is resting pretty much on this wood. So that's our smallest point, right? There's only about a small eighth right there. So that determines our smallest point. Now the first thing I have here, these little blocks I've got in my hands, this one is from the window sill. So let's take a look over here. So we've got this part of the window sill. That's our first thickness. And the reason we're doing this one first is because all three of these things we're using are different thicknesses. So the primed pine jam stock, you can see is quite a bit thinner. Quite a bit thinner there. So we can't use that. And the MDF is again, its own thickness that's not the same as the prime pine. So we got all these different things. So that's why we're gonna use the actual material we have. So the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna make a line right here. I'm gonna rest this sill where it's gonna belong. I'm gonna make a little pencil line. Maybe do one in the middle right here. And we'll do another one right back here. There's our line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take one of these guys. So I don't know what it's called. Take a good look at it. It's one of those, the slidey marky things. I don't know the names of the tools, you guys. I just know how to use them. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this thing up until it's right about there. We're gonna check it right here. Yeah, it's not bad. It's within a 16th. We're gonna check it right here. So it's within a 16th. If anything, it could go down a little bit. So I'm gonna split the difference just a little bit. I'm gonna lock it. And now I'm gonna make a few marks here. So we're going to mark Right here, maybe another one, about halfway down, or a, a, we're gonna split it into quarters. And another one down here. So these marks are all gonna get covered. These marks will all get covered by the trim. Or will they? I don't know. Either way, you'll be able to do a really good job by doing this. All right, next we gotta take our jam stock right here. And this is gonna make more sense as it goes along because we can't just measure to this line. So our jam is gonna be down here like this. That's how it's gonna be. And so we need to know what the distance is from this back edge up to here. We need that measurement. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna push this up right here, try and get it as flat as possible. It's about three quarters of an inch right there. I'm gonna write that right here. Three quarters. Check this one. Same thing, three quarters. Right here. So that's smaller now by a tiny bit. We are now, oh, it's so close to three quarters, but it's smaller. We wanna get this perfect, we gotta be precise. So this one is 11. Sixteenths, and this one is five eighths, even a bit smaller, because there's something going on there. I'm now gonna do this on the next two legs of this window, but we don't need to film that, because you just saw me do this one. Okay, so this does require a pretty high level of precision to get a really nice result, and really get all those lines lining up, like that weld into the corner. So I know this is about the sill, but you kind of need to figure this stuff out all at the same time before you start putting it all together because that way you get a consistent result. 
So now that we know all this, we can actually move on to the sill because I'll save the rest of this for the, um, let's say the jam, jamming out the window. Jam. So I'm taking a lot of time to make sure that I'm really precise on these. So, you know, we're even going down to the 16ths. This one's going to be 11 sixteenths for all them jam pieces. I've got a little line marked here so I can cut these all to the same length. When you have a sketchy cut to make, take a block, something like that. You can hold it down like this and then just cut slowly and carefully so you don't blow the piece all over the place. It doesn't go flying from the saw. Notice I let it stop spinning before I lift up the blade. Just keeps it a little safer. 11 sixteenths, so I don't forget what this little pile is. Okay, so um, I do actually need to know exactly where this stuff is gonna be because it does help, I'll show you guys. So I got my shims cut and I'm gonna put it up a little bit higher than the jam stock is gonna sit so that we can fit this in nicely. So right there is a 3 8 piece. I'm gonna nail it in. An 11 16 chunk right here. I'm gonna nail that in. Move your hand before you nail it. If it hits a nail in the wall, it can you back out and stick your finger there. Less than pleasant. Okay, now that we know this, we can get started working on the jam. So, uh, all right, I got a piece of my casing stock here, and I have a piece of the jam stock. When I said jam, I meant the windowsill. We can start working on the windowsill. So we're gonna put this right here, and it lines up pretty darn close to our line. And we also know that we're gonna have a quarter inch reveal on this thing. So let's be accurate. We'll get this guy out. We don't need it set to anything else anymore. Let's set it to a quarter inch so I get a quarter inch reveal right there. And I'm just gonna give this a little mark right here. There's a quarter inch. And there's another one just in case I put it in the wrong spot. Okay, so we're gonna have this piece like that. And then this piece is right here. So now we can determine where our casing is going to sit because you can't really, you know, it's tricky to do your um, windowsill when you don't know where the edge of your casing is if you want to get a consistent result. Mark the other side. Now we need to figure out where we are going to want to cut our, all of our lengths and stuff. Oh man, I, we already filmed this whole one today and I botched it and I wanted to do a better video. <laughs> Anyways, let's get this. So we need to know how much past our casing are we gonna go? Like where exactly is it gonna be? Is it gonna be teeny, like a quarter inch? Or do we want a little more space like that? That's what we need to figure out right now. So I think, I think that what I wanna do is uh, I'm gonna put it so that we have a little bit of this sill so that it's maybe on the wall right about there. So our casing's gonna line up right about there. So that's gonna be, what's that? That looks like about five eighths or so. Yeah, five eighths. So let's give it five eighths or so on the other side just to balance it out. So that means our casing, right? It's gonna be sitting right about there. We're gonna have a miter coming in. That should look pretty good. So five eighths past is what we need to remember. Okay, so if it's gonna go five eighths past, then we need to double that. So inch and a quarter. So let's get our measurement right here. 39 and a quarter, roughly. It's about 39 and 3 sixteenths, let's be precise. 39 and 3 sixteenths plus an inch is 40 and a six, 40 and 3 sixteenths plus a quarter, 40 and 7 sixteenths. Yeah, I know you metric guys are losing your mind right now. 40 and 7 sixteenths. I'm gonna write it down right here. 40 and 7 sixteenths total. Okay, so now we need an inside measurement right here. So this is from the inside of this. 
to about the inside of that. 36. I think 36 will fit in there. 36 small. 36 small. I just put a little minus sign inside. And inside, not in siddle. <laughs> so now we need a center measurement on this thing. So, um, the easiest way to get a center measurement is probably going to be to measure inside here. 31 and a quarter. Oh man, damn fractions. What's half of 31 and a quarter? 15 and 5 eighths, I think. 15 and 5 eighths. So does that actually line up? Let's measure again from this side. Yes. Okay. So there's our center right there. Oh, so much to figure out, you guys. <sighs> um, let's just work off the center of this board. And man, this got kind of mashed. I was mashing it around when I was doing some other stuff. That's too bad. We'll just try and sand it down and make it look a little better. Painter might have to fix it up a bit. Okay, you guys. So I said I wanted to leave about a quarter inch of space in here just to give it a kind of nice overlap. So... Um, the easiest way to do that is to measure like this. What do we got? Two and three quarters. Two and three quarters works there. Oh, what am I doing? Right there. Yeah, two and three quarters. Okay. So, that means that we want this to be two and three quarters. So that's two right there. Two and three quarters. Let's not mess this one up this time. <laughs> and we can't cut it like this because it has this lip right here. So if we cut it, it'll wind up on an angle. So we gotta do it upside down. So you wanna push it slowly and have a decent blade when you're going upside down. And yeah. That's pretty good right there. Just eyeballing it with the blade. This isn't an exact science here. And we don't need this much saw blade up. You know, the more blade you have, the deeper the cut in your hand. So we can lower this down. I was taught, anyways, somebody's gonna disagree, but I was taught that your material or your blade, you know, the, the, this deep part, the curve, I don't remember what the heck that's called, that deep part uh, between the teeth has to be just above the material. That's what I was taught. Okay, now we need our inside measurement. Let's just make it on the center of this board to simplify things. Okay, our measurements are 36 small, inside to inside. That's four feet, two feet, there's our center, and 36 small is our inside to inside measurement. Half of 36 is 18. 36 small means we need to fudge it over a little. So, 36 small right there. 36 small right there. So how this is gonna go, all right, come over here. All right, see this line? That's the overhang we wanted to have. What is that, five eighths? Yep, five eighths. So now we can line this up right here, and we can go, oh no, that's totally wrong. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so it was actually, I actually had a line, what it was, it was this much. So we got this line right here. You focused on it? Mm -hmm. So this line right here. Actually, it's going to be our cut line. Let's not mess that up again. That's what I messed up on the first one. So I wound up with a quarter inch reveal all around here, not a five eighths one. Make sure they're the same. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. There's a lot of room for error when using the cut ends 
of a piece in a square. So it's better to mark both sides like I just did. Get that. Okay, that's what we need to cut out. That's what we need to cut out. All right, never hurts to clamp your work piece down. So you can use a jigsaw or a skill saw or whatever you want for this part. Most of this cut is buried. Somebody's getting low battery. And because I don't have a jigsaw, I just got to finish this part of the cutout. Do the same on the other side. Ah, oh, come on, you only had to make it through one, two more cuts. That's okay. <laughs> These are like the same tools and batteries that I've been running for so long because I've been doing so much drywall work in between everything, I don't wear out my tools very fast. Okay, now we need to know, and I'd love to see if this fits first, but there's part of this wall might get in my way. Let's try anyways. Yeah, that's what I thought. This gets in the way. But we, if we just rough cut it to right here, then I can check it. Is that my rough cut? Yeah, it was. Okay, so this one's cut out a little bit more than I want it to be. So we might have to fudge this windowsill just a teeny bit. Um, in this case, we need to cut out a little bit of this, just a little bit. So to right about there, I'm looking at the gap closes up to right about here. So I need to differentiate it from that nice line. So you don't always need to do this. It depends how nice the framing is, how straight everything is. But in this case, it's not perfect. So let's make it better. One of these ought to do. There we go. This should be good enough. Yeah, why not for good measure? I hope that this looks good. This is sort of where we went wrong last time was at this stage of things when I had to fine tune the sill. Sand the edge so that you can't see the uh, inconsistencies in your cut edge as well. You know, when you cut it by hand like that. And it just looks better when you round over those edges. Where are we at? I can live with that. And that gap's closed up a bit better. You just have one little inconsistency right here. Oh well. Little caulk, little paint makes the carpenter what he ain't. You know what, you guys? I want it better. I want it better. Let's tilt this blade. Let's get this blade up. Tilt it. And show you guys how to really fine tune this. So now we're gonna put a bevel on this piece. Okay. Now we're just farting around here. I wanna make sure that I don't go past this line. Okay, let's test it. Test cut. All right, what putting that bevel on this did is it's gonna allow me to shave off any material I need to a lot easier and faster. I want this to look really good. Let's make this one shine because I don't like this little inconsistent line I got going right here. It's not that nice. But you can see that tight right here, loose there. Okay, so I'm just marking the spots that could really use it. So it's kind of like from there to right about there. That's, I got some sandpaper on a block. And I'm just gonna start. Try that. All right, now we are about to do um, the miters because the miters are important. Otherwise you wind up 
with this little space right here, which looks super dumb. We don't want that. So what we are gonna do, we already know our casing's coming out to right here. So why don't we mark it? Right there. Right here. Now we know it's gonna be five eighths more. There's one line. Five eighths. So five eighths past. Right there. You need to mark your mark right on the corner there. So how that's gonna look is it's gonna look like this. Like that. That's gonna be your mitered cut. Five eighths past. It doesn't hurt to do this so that you can really visualize it. Okay, make sure you know that that's your mark right there because you can't do this one twice. Okay, now we're gonna cut this and you need to make sure that you have your stock sitting totally flat. And um, actually, ideally, it should be getting cut like this but that back isn't totally square. And I may just have to go with it because I don't think I can cut this um, flipped around without cutting this off by accident, which we don't want to do. So make sure it's super flat, set on 45. Oh, in this case I have a laser, so I can actually line it up. Oh, but hang on just a second. Ah, somehow my mark didn't wind up 45. Good to know. Don't trust this mark. Trust the mark I have to cut and trust the saw on 45. Always good to double check things. 45. This one actually looks like it lasers on 45, so it's gonna work out. Okay, now we need to cut our mitered returns, which is this little bit back here. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna install this piece first because it's easier to stuff those miters in when this piece is installed. We'll get this little bit of tape out of here. It's not serving any, any good. Those are just shims. That's cedar. Oh yeah, this isn't nailed down well. So, good thing, I checked it. need to make sure that what you're fastening to is solid. We don't actually need any glue on this. It'll be fine. Okay, line it up. Nail it in. So now, this is why I was saying it's easier once it's already installed. Now we can actually measure how long these are. So we've got about an inch and seven sixteenths to the very tip. One and seven sixteenths. This one's an inch and seven sixteenths small. I'm gonna write it down on this piece of wood. One and seven sixteenths on the left side. One and seven sixteenths small on the right side. I do that so I don't forget which side. All right, now we're gonna cut this stuff right here. Two inch and seven sixteenths. So off the stool right here, we're gonna go Inch and seven sixteenths. We could even go inch and a half. Maybe. I'll find out. Sorry you guys, I'm a little rusty, but it'll look good when we're done. And hopefully you learn something from this. Now we're gonna cut a couple of miters here. These are our mitered returns. Make sure it's nice and flat. So, these are gonna be the opposite sides. So, this one is the right hand side, and this one is the left hand side. So, inch and seven sixteenths small, inch and seven sixteenths small, Right there, and this one was an inch and seven sixteenths. Make sure you don't cut on the wrong side of the line for these. 
you cut on the wrong side of the line, then your piece is too small and it won't work. So it's going to be the little piece that goes flying off. There it went. Hopefully none of that chipped off or blew out. And these are our mitered returns. Oh, yeah, the saw got that one a little bit, but um, that's okay. It'll look good. Oh, you guys, I cut them a little bit long, so we're just going to do it again. And I'll make them about an eighth shorter. Oops. I'm rusty. I'm rusty. You don't need to film this part. I'll show you them after I've cut them. They're going to be an eighth shorter. Okay, you guys, the moment of truth. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Right there. Okay. So these are pretty simple. I just glue the crap out of them. Stuff them in. And if you cut them, like I tried to cut them pretty snug and that's why they were a little bit too tight last time. So I'll often just give them a few little tap taps to really persuade them into place. Oh, oh, darn it. There we go. Okay, don't touch it. So we're actually almost done this video, you guys. I mean, this is it, installing a windowsill. Hang okay, on, need a little shim. Just plunk this little shim in here to get it where we really want it to stay. I'm happy with that, wipe the glue off. Get it flush, walk away, have a coffee. Okay, I thought we were done the windowsill, you guys. I almost wrapped up the video and then I realized that actually it looks good when you do um, an apron on the windowsill. So the apron is the little piece that goes under here and it's gonna be the same width as the casing. So it really does, again, help to get your jam set up so that you know what your casing's gonna, um, you, what your casing dimension is. So the shim's conveniently placed that I can just hook right on there. So we've got 39 and an eight. Okay, 39 and an eight. We've got some extra stock right here. 39 and an eight. Okay, and because um, our casing is two and a half inches, I think it'll look silly if this thing doesn't match. So we're gonna rip it down to two and a half inches. Okay. So now the only thing left to do is make sure I have the finished side. One side has a better paint job. And round over those edges, you guys. Round them over. Don't leave that sharp. Looks unprofessional. I'm not doing the mitered returns on this. <laughs> Speaking of making it look professional or not. You know what you can do? When you paint these, you can like caulk the wood grain and um, that acts even better than priming because it sort of seals the grain down. Okay, so on this, I am gonna use a little bit of glue. Why not? Why not? Get rid of that hardened blob. Just a little bit of glue. Oops, oh, that's gonna squirt out the bottom. I want it closer to the top. So let's do something about this guy before it pukes out the bottom. There we go. Okay. And that's because there isn't a lot of uh, framing specifically to fasten this to. So let's line that up with where the casing's gonna go, right about there. Yeah, that looks good. I know there's a stud right here. Probably one here. And then there might be something here. Maybe something here, probably something here. Okay, so that is how to do a windowsill. Now we're actually done and ready for jam and casing, which is gonna be a separate video coming soon. So I wanna say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you guys got something out of this video and um, yeah, be sure to check out the next one about jamming and trimming a windowsill while trying to film with the sun pouring in the window and getting crazy lighting. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys got something out of this, um, yeah. Till the next one. Yeah, that looks good.